Thank you, Mark. Lady Aston once said to Winston Churchill, You, Winston, are drunk. And Winston Churchill said, Yes, I am drunk, but tomorrow I will be sober. You, however, are ugly, and tomorrow you will still be ugly. <laughs> you want a lot of applause for that from the non-women members of Parliament. I have a question for you. The other day I was talking to my family, and we have these great discussions about all the pertinent topics of the day, and one of them was legalizing marijuana. Because Colorado has done it, and California is trying to do it. They've put the camel's nose under the tent and said that it's only for people who have medical problems. And yet I can tell you from personal experience, twice a day, and if Kiefer was here, he would verify it, I get calls from these people who can barely remember their names, who call me on the phone and want to rent one of the places that I represent for them to put in an illegal marijuana operation. Now you say, how is it illegal if, they're, if it's allowed by law? Well, it is not allowed by zoning because the people who actually run our governments don't want these illegal operations in their cities. They don't want the police, they don't want the hassles of the bums who end up outside these places, they don't want more drug addiction, they don't want a lot of things. So they don't zone any place where these guys can go. And then I get two calls a day from people who are going to go up and open up a shop <coughs> anyway, make a lot of money until they get thrown out of business. And they pay double or triple the amount of money that all my other tenants make. And when I tell them that I don't want to do business with them because I don't want them in my communities and none of the people I represent want to do business with them, they get irate. And I get into discussions about the Civil War and about how the federal government won the Civil War, which means federal law triumphs over state law. And up until the last budget was passed in the last couple weeks, Federal law disallowed any marijuana usage. It was a Title I illicit contraband. And the federal government had the right to break down your door and arrest anybody who engaged in it. And if you happen to own your building and not have any debt, they could take the equity in your building. They could take it from you without trial because you're benefiting from a drug user that is illegal under federal law. Now, President Obama's not enforcing this law, but this was the law of the land up until a couple weeks ago when we just passed this big budget amendment, and somebody, and we don't know yet who yet, put in the thousands and thousands of pages that now state law does triumph over federal law for this one rule. So all the way up until two or three weeks ago, federal law was going to triumph, but now they're trying to undermine it. So this is a pertinent topic. I have personal experience twice a day. And when I say these people can't remember their names, I'm not joking. I ask them their telephone numbers and half the time they can't give me a correct telephone number. I'm not <coughs> joking. So I'll get back to that a little bit later, but I want to ask you a question that I've asked my kids. They're all in favor of legalizing marijuana. Not because they supposedly use it, but because they think that if they legalize it, there'll be less use of it. I said, how is that going to work? Why would people use something less if it were legal? And they said, because everyone is rebelling against their parents. And it, it's sort of like smoking in your day, Dad. They, no one really wanted to smoke, but they just did it to get back at authority. So if you made it legal, then there will be fewer people using it because now they're not getting back and being a rebel. That, this didn't seem right to me. This seemed like a silly way to argue. So I put, what I normally do, lots and lots and lots of time into researching, let's say, prohibition. Because prohibition, there was a time in this country when alcohol went from being legal to illegal for 10 years, starting in 1920. 1920, the 18th Amendment made alcohol illegal. Now I'm going to have a vote here. Who thinks alcohol use went down during prohibition? Everybody, raise your hand. Anyone who thinks alcohol use went down during Prohibition between 1920 and when it was repealed in 19... Gosh, I hate my eyes. 
1933. I'm going to say it went down, but I don't know who's keeping the numbers. Who's for it went down? Raise your hands. Okay, who's for alcohol use went up? Raise your hands. All right, so you're obviously agreeing with my daughter who's telling you that alcohol use goes up when it becomes illegal. Well, in fact, I have a cute little graph here. And this graph in yellow, which I will pass around because I know there's not a lot of us, you'll all be able to benefit from seeing it up close. This is pre-prohibition. Look at this gigantic drop that happens after prohibition. The alcohol use actually goes down to 30% of what it used to be. And then slowly during prohibition, as people start not liking the law, it rises from 1930, or 1920 to 1933 to about 60 to 70% of the old level. But still, it's 30% lower than where it used to be. And now here's the interesting part. After 1933, when the majority of the people no longer support prohibition and they get rid of it, it still stays at about 70% until the war hits and then everyone becomes an alcoholic again. And it goes all the way back up to where it used to be. Now, how do you measure that? <coughs> how do you measure the use of something that's illegal during prohibition? Well, you have to look at things that are highly correlated with alcohol use. For example, alcohol deaths, drunken arrests. Uh, they can look at alcoholic psychosis and cirrhosis deaths. And so the people who are experts at this stuff, granted they went to MIT rather than Harvard, but their names are Jeffrey A. Myron and Jeffrey Zwiebel. And I have their entire paper here, and I will read an, ex an abstract of what it says. We estimate the consumption of alcohol during prohibition using mortality, mental health, and crime statistics. We find that alcohol consumption fell sharply at the beginning of Prohibition to approximately 30% of its pre-Prohibition level. During the next several years, however, alcohol consumption increased sharply to about 60 to 70% of its pre-Prohibition level. Now you might say, why is that? And I will tell you why. There are several channels through which prohibition may affect alcohol consumption. First, prohibition increases supply costs, as these must include the cost of evading detection and the potential cost of punishment. When you keep something illegal, people don't want to go to jail, so they charge more for it, which is why it costs $250 an ounce for marijuana over in Colorado right now. You might say, well, it's legal, it should be less than here in California, but it's still illegal according to federal law, so it hasn't really come down in pricing. Second, prohibition inhibits consumer access to alcohol by raising search costs, making quality dubious and increasing the possibilities of being cheated. I don't know as a personal fact, but I assume when people go to buy their drugs, they don't have a little laboratory with them to test the quality of what they're buying. They obviously have either bought from that same person before and tend to think that it's only diluted by a certain percentage, but there's no way to really know. It's not regulated. And that deters people from buying it. Third, prohibition may create a prevailing sentiment that a certain good is bad or immoral, thereby decreasing consumer demand. Well, my daughter seems to think that people use it more often if it's immoral, but in fact, it shows that that's not the case. And finally, prohibition may deter some individual's consumption because of respect for the law. I guess there's still some respect for the law. Even though consumption per se was not illegal, purchasing alcohol during prohibition involved doing business with criminals. Some people don't like doing business with criminals. So for those reasons, that's why this graph shows this huge drop. Now I'll go ahead and pass this around so that you guys can take a closer look at it. I wish all the people who are running for our government could actually cite sources or give something on the internet that proves all the statistics that they have a tendency to either misremember or make up. But at least when I'm talking, and I have to persuade the people in this room that I'm not making stuff up, <laughs> I bring the source material. I love it when Mike laughs that loud. He doesn't believe what I say anyway. <laughs> now here's another interesting study, because I know one study just isn't enough, so I brought four today. 
Here's one. The <laughs> Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, an operating division within the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Now, how prevalent is drug use? According to their statistics, in 2014, 27 million people aged 12 or older used an illicit drug in the past 30 days. 27 million, there's 350 million people in America. This corresponds to about 1 in 10 Americans, because not that, those are the ones that are over 12 years old. So 10.2% of our population is using an illegal drug. Now, let's look at what's called substance abuse disorders. Approximately 21.5 million people aged 12 or older in 2014 had a substance abuse disorder in the past year. That means they can't function. They don't get to work on time. They're chronically absent. They're vomiting all over their friends. They're drunk driving. They're running into people. They're, you know, whatever they're doing. That's called an alcohol use disorder or a substance abuse disorder. Now, 17 million people had an alcohol use disorder. 7.1 million had an illicit drug use disorder. So what we're finding is that something that is legal, which is alcohol, has been abused, and there's <coughs> twice as many people that are therefore suffering from substance abuse that are alcoholics rather than drug use. Now if we make drug use legal, we can probably predict that they will be equal in numbers. So we'll get another 10 million people with an illicit drug use disorder assuming that they like alcohol just as much as they like marijuana. Now the illicit drugs that are used, 22 million are using marijuana. That's the biggest one. 4.3 million are abusing prescription painkillers, which they can still get legally and just, who do we know who overused oxytocin, one of, one of our conservative heroes? Gresh Lumba. Gresh Yeah, he's guilty of that. He, he's one of those 4.3 million. <laughs> See, equal opportunity bashing here, just to make the token Democrat feel happy. All right, so I will go ahead. I didn't mean to be condescending there, but it's just part of my nature. All right, so I will go ahead and pass this around. You guys can take a look at this. This one's really heavy. You can actually beat a burglar to death with this one. So why is this important? Well, obviously I've shown that prohibition decreases the use of something. It's good to have less use of something that's bad for you, if you think marijuana is bad for you. Here's my next study. Persistence of cannabis dependence. This is a fabulous study that was done by Madeline Meyer in 2012. And it used over 1,037 individuals who were followed from birth to the age 38. So it was a 38-year study. And cannabis use was ascertained in interviews at ages 18, 21, 26, 32, and 38. And they were tested. So they weren't just interviewed, they were tested for use of marijuana in the, in the time frame of when they did their test. Now, the more these individuals used cannabis, the dumber they became. I don't know any other way to say it. Their IQs went down from 99 average to 93 for those who used it all the time. Six IQ points they lost. Six. Now, not all of us are geniuses who can afford to lose six IQ points. Some of us are normal. Losing six IQ points is not good. And the more they used it, the more they lost. Pretty nasty stuff here. Pretty nasty stuff showing that these people are hurting themselves. Now you might say, and I've heard it before, people say, well, marijuana use is just as bad as alcohol. Well, not really, because at least you wake up the next morning sober rather than stupid. <laughs> these people stay stupid. I'm going to pass this around. And Interesting some of you choice of words. Might might double think what's going on with your lives. Not be quite so libertarian, but who knows? We'll find out. So if I was to rephrase the joke that I originally started with, because Winston Churchill isn't around anymore, I would rephrase it as a stoner coming up to Mr. Kennedy and saying, Mr. Kennedy, you are drunk. And Mr. Kennedy would say, 
Yes, but tomorrow I will be sober. At least for ten minutes until I start drinking again. But you, however, will still be stupid. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank <laughs> you.